Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, my name is Alejandra Zaragoza Sherman. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Psychology at OHUS BSS and the president of the Junior Research Association. With me are Ada Le, uh, uh, Anna Le Gestrom Paul and Ada Pastor Olivares. Anna is a postdoctoral fellow at the Department of Management, and Ada is a postdoctoral fellow at the Department of uh, Bioscience. We welcome you to the conference More Women in Science, More Women in Research, a Call for Action. A special thank you to our speakers today for accepting our invitation. Oh, look at that. I can move that. Perfect. Also, uh, thank you very much to the Committee for Research and External Cooperation for their sponsorship. And finally, thank you also to Talent Development for their support. The Union Research Association was created about a year ago. We represent all union researchers at the university across faculties. If you are a union researcher yourself, please join our General Assembly happening next Friday. You all received uh, outside a brochure about the association. Why are we here? Ojus University has a problem. The problem is the retention and advancement of women researchers. In a few seconds, I am going to show you data from 2017 that represent the distribution of men and women at different career stages in all faculties. Here they come. This is the data for the Faculty of Arts. I hope you can see it well at the back. The second figure is the same data, but in this case for uh, the faculty of whose BSS. In all these figures, the blue <coughs> bars represent the percentage of men in these different positions at the career level, PhD, postdoc, assistant professor, associate professor, and professor. Then we have the data for the faculty of health. And finally, we have the data for science and technology. You can see that it gets from bad to worse. <laughs> Taken together, these figures indicate that the higher the academic position, the fewer women there are. Across faculties at Ojus University, four or every five, men pro pro five professors are men. And here you have a distribution for the entire faculty, uh, the entire university taken together. Same, same uh, data, same information. We are clearly losing massive amounts of talent. Why is this? We are all dumbfounded. Historically, it has been suggested that women do not feel senior positions because they do not apply for promotions or they do not apply for a job if they do not fulfill 100% of the job requirements. Other explanations indicate that the maternity leave damages career progression, that women lack confidence, and finally, that they might also lack the skills, the determination, or the creativity to reach these positions. As a result of this narrative, women encounter preconceptions, misconceptions, and generalizations about their lives as scientists and researchers. There is also a problem with these explanations. They do not provide the full picture. 
they do not take into account how internalized gender bias has a negative impact on women's research careers. Additionally, they ignore the institutional structures, contexts, and practices in which gender bias occurs and how it is perpetuated both in the university and in society. This problem is not exclusive of universities. It happens in the arts, in the private industry, and in politics as well. But most importantly, these explanations fail to see that gender bias in any area is not a women's issue. It is a leadership issue. We must transform the current narrative from a single story to the full story, as writer Chimamanda Adichie would suggest. If you don't know who she is, uh, she ap appeared on Vikinovism, uh, I think uh, last week or two weeks ago, and there is a fantastic uh, tech talk about the danger of the single story that if you haven't seen, uh, I recommend that you look it up. We also, besides changing this narrative, we must also take action to solve the problem. In order to attempt to do this, we've gathered you here today to share a program with us in which we can think about solutions. For this program, where we take action, first we have uh, Karen K. Madsen. Thank you for coming. She will describe the trends in academic careers and offer an explanation for why gender balance seems difficult to achieve. These trends are important for our objective. But what is our objective? What are we here for? Our, our objective is to gather your input for the next action plan to improve gender balance at the university, and this will happen later today during the workshop. The current action plan for more women in research 2016 and 2020 has been handed out to you. It's available outside in case you are not familiar with it. After that, uh, Neil Christian Nielsen will give us an update on the program made until, on the progress sorry, made until now. We hope that this information will help you see what initiative seems to work in this context and which ones do not for the past few years. One potential action that the plan does not consider uh, very thoroughly is how to partner with external actors to improve gender balance in research. <coughs> there is valuable expertise also at the university, also at South, outside the university. And for that reason, we have invited Inge Biels uh, Henningsen, who will then provide external inspiration for our efforts and our, our discussions. One of the initiatives that the plan does recommend is enhancing the visibility of role models. Therefore, we have an amazing lineup of leading women researchers today, representing all four faculties. Lore Minet from Arts, Dore Benson from Ohus BSS, Lise Boensen from Health, and Trine Bilder from Science and Technology. We have invited them to tell us about their academic life careers, to learn about their experience succeeding in academia and how they, ha they have faced obstacles and overcome them. In addition, we also celebrate their careers and accomplishments. The Union Research Association wants Ojus University to be a leading research institution on gender equality, setting new standards for attracting, retaining, and advancing women in science and inspiring other universities all over the world to do so. Union researchers are willing to help with the task. How are we going to do that? We start today with this conference by posing a question to you. What important actions must Ohus University take to reach gender balance? Our dream is that when we celebrate our 100th anniversary in 2028, 
the university is recognized as a leader for gender equality with a high quality research and innovation that diversity is known to foster. During the workshop, please have this goal in mind. In your name badge, it says what table you should join. Please consider that as well. We believe it will be an interesting and productive full day. After the workshop, we will close our academic program and then reconvene later at the Women's Museum downtown for a social event with dinner and a tour of the museum. If you are on social media, please use the hashtags for the event on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Take your pick. We have prepared this program for you to learn and reflect about the gender bias currently existing at our <coughs> university. We invite you to be inspired, propose solutions to improve gender balance and connect to other people. Please enjoy the day. Now, uh, Lisa Bonson, Vice Dean of Health and member of the Committee for Research and External Cooperation, which I'm told has changed its name, will join me in welcoming you and in opening the conference. Thank you. Alejandra, thank you for your introduction. I think you did a splendid work, so my voice will be very poor and compared to that. And thank you for inviting me to, uh, to the conference uh, along with, uh, with everybody else. And I'm happy to be here, and I look very much forward to gazing the discussions throughout the day. As Vice Dean for Talent Development at the Faculty of Health, I'm, of course, deeply concerned with biases that may include highly talented individuals from having a career at Aarhus University. Different mindsets are crucial to generate new ideas and excellence in research, and we cannot afford to lose a big pool of talent. We need every single talent for generating research-based solutions for the global cha challenges we are encountering. In order to stand the excellent higher education and research institution we are st striving to be, it is vital that our university overcomes biases and promotes diversity. Today, successful universities have clear and sharp policies for diversity, and it is an important factor when recruiting excellent research talents from all around the world. If we look at the private sector, research clearly shows that diversity is a major asset, asset when it comes to success of the companies. Diversity helps make companies more innovative, respected, and profitable. For example, companies that have women in top management have more creativity and produce more patents. Therefore, it seems obvious to look at the expertise and experience in the private sector and consider successful <coughs> principles that we can incorporate into our university practice. Gender must never become an impediment to achieving the highest research career or management career at Aarhus University. And yet, we know that it still is for women. And we know this from research in the field. And uh, Alejandro, you showed some numbers and how is the scissors and the gap is, uh, is looking at Aarhus University. And it seems uh, we know that we lose highly talented and educated women at our institution. Implementation and work with gender equality plans are not necessarily followed by increased representation of women in senior research positions. Unconscious biases are still at work. So during this day, at this conference, I hope we take several steps forward in understanding the gender biases that are at work at this institution and find ideas to how we can overcome the preconceptions. So this, the outcome of the conference, I hope will be a very, very excellent and good input to the next action plan at Aarhus University so we can fulfill your wishes for 2028 of the 100 years anniversary. Finally, I would like to thank the Junior Research, Junior Research Association for taking up the challenge and organizing this conference. And I hope you everybody will enjoy the conference today. And I think we should give the, a hand to the association.